Hi, my name is Elliot. I am a journalist by trade. I studied journalism and I am currently, as a job, making YouTube videos with a, let's say, left wing political view. And recently we've had something happen, haven't we, in the United States and, of course, in global politics, because anything that happens politically in the United States has huge implications for the rest of the world, most of which are constantly negative. I have put together a quick video presentation in the wake of this election to address a lot of you folks, many of whom are young, many of whom do not have a ton of comfortability or education in terms of doing political work or studying political stuff, but really for anybody, anywhere, of all ages, identities, abilities, etc., to kind of give some suggestions and encouragement for things that you can do to make the world a better place, let's say. More specifically, to fight the ongoing creep of fascism, which is being incentivized and engendered by really both political parties in the United States, but especially for the new ruling party, the Republican Party. You might be of a different political inclination than I am. That's understandable. Many people have many different political inclinations. And it might be because of your family or where you grew up or because you heard some information that sounds quite promising, um, or maybe misinformation, or maybe something that's true. My goal here is just to provide you with some information, some ideas, and some encouragement, particularly with the goal of, as FD Signifier, uh, another cool YouTuber said in a recent video, of creating dual power, meaning we have to build systems that work for the people who are being screwed over by the system that is currently in power. Systems of governments that exist, systems of economics, etc., are founded on many people being exploited violently and having so many things taken away from them in order to feed the pockets of a few people. I am personally not an organizer. I want to make that clear. I'm also not running for any political office. I am just a journalist, just uh, an artist in some senses, and these are some things that I have gleaned from my own reading, my own communication with different people, people that I follow, people that I have relationships with. And I think a lot of you will benefit from hearing at least one or two of these things. And if at least one person or one small group of people can watch this video and think to themselves, wow, that's that's something cool I'm going to check out and can do something based on what they hear in this video to help themselves and help other people in a real way, that means the world to me. That's what this is really about. Otherwise, it's all just about doing your job, getting the algorithm to like you, etc. We have to pay bills after all. Okay, so this is going to be rapid fire. Feel free to take notes or use the chapters in the description. The first one I want to mention is local politics. So a lot of the times we're engendered to think that voting in the presidential election is basically the center of our politics. What matters the most to each person is who they support for president, what political party they most affiliate with, etc. And one of the things I'm most passionate about is dispelling that idea for people and helping people understand that what matters is not just your vote, but in fact, everything you do for the rest of the time that you exist on this earth. It's not about something that you do on one day after you have a couple of really uninspiring options laid out for you. It's about what you do day by day to learn, to help other people, and to help other people help other people. One of the things that you can do isn't even all that separate from voting for presidents. Um, it has to do with voting on a local level. In the United States in particular, you have a fairly tenuous relationship between states and central government of the country, and a lot of things uh, in terms of your quality of life and the rights that you have and the things that you can do will be determined by what state you live in, what city you live in, what county you live in, in many cases. So getting involved in local politics is really important. But oftentimes people online, leftists, people with floofy hair like I have, will tell you this and will not say much more than that. Or they might just say like, let me know if you've heard this one before, organize, exclamation mark. That I want to take at least one step beyond today and just explain to you, for instance, how much difference there is in terms of what can be achieved at the local level and what is happening at the local level in many cases and the reality of the political establishment overall. 
the government of the United States has its interests to manage. That interest is to maintain an empire over which there are imperialists, emperors, etc. It's the same way empires have worked forever, okay? And there are millions and millions and millions of us, not just in this country, but really of the billions around the world, because like I said, everybody's affected by US politics, who essentially are being manipulated to <laughs> act in specific ways in order to survive with the ultimate goal of feeding the pockets of those people let's say. And so at a local level, what happens is that there's much less of a direct connection with those larger entities, let's say, and that doesn't necessarily make it better or worse. But it does mean that, for instance, you can do more for a group of 50 people than you can for a group of 100. You can do more for your neighborhood than you can for your town. You can do more for your town than you can for your city, for your state, for your country, etc. Not just in terms of like, purely fetishizing local politics, but in terms of saying, hey, the first things that are available and often the things that you'll have the most say on are the ones that are smaller. And yet those smaller steps are often ignored by us. We often look at those things as unimportant. Honestly, we're, we're educated to think that way. We're educated to think that by doing something that is small potatoes, quote unquote, that we're not really contributing to a real change in the world. But for me, as far as my understanding of history as I've studied it very remedially, it seems to me that small steps build up into big steps. And so, for example, the state of Missouri in this past presidential election elected a Republican right wing governor and voted for the Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. And yet people within the state voted for fairly left wing changes, one might say. Derricka Purnell, I'm going to quote for this tweet, mentions how Missouri went red for president and governor, mentions how on the ground organizing was able to codify abortion, win paid sick leave, and get a $15 minimum wage. And she shouts out this organizer, Kayla Reed, who is an executive director of Action St. Louis. So I wanna shout that organizer and that organization out for contributing to those efforts. And these are the kinds of things that you can get involved with in your state level, in your city. There are these action networks, there are these organizations that mobilize in all types of ways, in ways that I certainly cannot be able to summate for you. But that goes to show that in that state, if you live there, there are huge changes potentially that are happening in your life in terms of how you can live in that state. And they're not happening just off of the presidential election. So sorry for being a bit long-winded there. I guess that's a theme here. But I think that helps demonstrate not only just like some of the things that local politics do and how many times local politics create pretty significant small-scale wins for people, but also some steps you can take contacting people, looking up what Action St. Louis, Action Networks uh, in other places, look up on their social media networks, what organizations they're affiliated with. These are the kinds of things you can do. You can also go to local protests. Um, there are protests happening all the time for a myriad of reasons, and you can find organizations there, setting up shop, helping people, distributing things, etc. So local politics is a huge and important beast. We're nothing without it. And it's, let's say, a great first step. I also wanna talk about mutual aid, which is something I'm very passionate about. We're in a time period when, regardless of the party affiliation of a person running a country, there are so many rights being stripped away from us, and there are so many staggering economic shifts that make it so that the prices of everything are much higher, and it's harder and harder to make a living. So you're having to give more and more of yourself to the machine, to the empire, in order to keep yourself afloat, or do well, let's even say. Mutual aid is one of those things that we need to study and we need to embody relentlessly. We need to organize as much as possible. Mutual aid is something that exists probably in your city, in your locale. It's everywhere. There are constantly mutual aid organizations you can see popping up. And what they do is essentially pool money from people who inside or outside of the neighborhood wants to donate to that neighborhood for anybody to come and, and be able to gain resources. So there are places that are functioning as food pantries that are community run, donate money, donate supplies, donate foods to these food pantries. And those food pantries are with volunteer work, mobilizing to get that stuff out. This work is often so time consuming. Sometimes the most you can think to do or the most you have energy to do on a particular day is just send money somewhere. 
well, I ask you to think about sending money much more to mutual aid places, um, taking percentages out of your check to do so, um, or setting up mutual aid things uh, on a small basis, whether it be just something that is a project for a group of people that are in the neighborhood or a group of people that you know online even to raise funds for them. These kinds of things are pretty similar to charity. But there are significant differences that you can see outlined in a book that I recommended in my last video, Mutual Aid by Dean Spade. So I really encourage you all to read that book. It's quite short. It's quite easy to read. Volunteering is obviously something that everybody gets, you know, a chance to do at some point in their life. Hopefully everybody's encouraged to do that. And volunteering can come in many shapes and sizes. And often you can be volunteering for a cause that is not very good. So volunteering is something that is going to be very important, but it's about volunteering for the right places, volunteering for things that are being organized in your neighborhood by people part of a community to help people who are in need, to help people who are disenfranchised. So what I want you to do, if you haven't <laughs> taken any notes yet, I want you to go into a separate browser or a separate tab and look up Food Not Bombs. Food Not Bombs is essentially like a loose collective of small scale organizations all over the world. Uh, including in many, many places in the U.S. And I've been to one in New York multiple times. It's just folks who come from all different backgrounds just getting together, cooking plant-based food for unhoused people and giving it out. For people who are poor, for people who are just coming, you don't even necessarily need to know where they're from. You just need people to understand that if they need food, there's a place in this neighborhood once a week at least that can provide you with food and it can be healthy food and it can be food that is made by people who care and it can be food that is also less taxing on the environment because it's vegetarian. I'm not going to get deep into veganism and plant-based politics now. I myself don't consider myself a vegan, but I have been moving more and more towards a plant-based diet over the past few months and I'm doing so because for one it does have health benefits and it is sometimes easier to cook and da da da. But also Again, we're not going to get into it. There's a lot of things we can talk about that are better for our political worlds and our economic environment. A lot of things that benefit from more and more people switching to plant-based diets. Um, a lot of things that are constrained heavily, a lot of exploitation that happens based off of the cruel exploitation of animals all over the world. So that's something to keep in mind. I also want to shout out on that note agriculture as something to look at a lot of people you know all over TikTok you might see um, are talking about you know growing stuff it's something that probably a lot of Gen Zers are pretty interested in uh, even if it's just something small in your kitchen but it's really important to learn how to garden a little bit uh, it's something that I'm gonna get into pretty soon just on the basis of for one like it gives you a great understanding of how nature works and all that but it's also something that we might potentially really see the benefits of if we do it in community. I don't know if you've seen community gardens nearby. I also recommend that you check out a blog called The Last Farm on Substack. If you subscribe to it, it has a lot of great information and ideas about things you can do agriculturally on a community basis, on a low-key basis. And again, especially when we talk about the kinds of food shortages and necessities for people under all types of crises in today's day and age, including climate crises that are extremely dangerous and have killed many people, there are going to be significant considerations that need to be made for, you know, sustainable agriculture that can be used not only to send out to those people, but that can be built within those neighborhoods as an alternative to relying solely on purchasing from corporate entities who are constantly making their food way too expensive and way, way more unhealthy and it, nobody seems like they can do anything about it right at this juncture so that's an idea for that another thing i don't know if this is going to be controversial wear a mask wear an n95 or kn95 mask when you're in public around a bunch of people i know a lot of you don't like this suggestion a lot of people also maybe feel a bit tentative about vaccination but i can assure you that both of those things are extremely healthy things to do for yourself and others like literally not just for the consideration of disabled people and people who are immunocompromised and children and the elderly etc etc uh, who are at risk of getting COVID-19 or other difficult illnesses some of which are coming back into fashion right now it's not just about that but also about the fact that honestly your quality of life can 
go up just from masking and of course from vaccinating against certain diseases. I find that masking really helps me when it comes to fending off allergies sometimes. I find that it helps me not get sick as much or you know mitigate the symptoms of sickness when I am you know sick or am at risk of being sick. We have not gotten rid of COVID. Uh, I want to point your attention to the People's CDC, an organization that I've talked about multiple times on this channel, as a website which acts as, as the title implies, a sort of People's CDC. Um, if you know what the CDC is, it's essentially that organization, that part of the U.S. government that is supposed to be managing disease control and preventment and is not doing a great job. And it's not something that the U.S. government really seems to care very much about because they don't really care when poor people die because they got sick, especially when they can make so much money off of people who have any money to give when they get sick in this healthcare system that is sure to get a lot worse. So please make some more considerations about health, whether it be in your diet, whether it be through masking and vaccination, whether it be through learning different remedies, learning different first aid things, different first aid things, first aid techniques. I'm pretty sure that's not encompassing a huge swath of things. Be focused on community health as much as possible. I also wanted to shout out or um, the idea that you can organize events. Uh, organizing is not just something that you can follow somebody else doing and try to contribute. But you can even gussy up to organize an event uh, on a small scale. It could be something like a reading group or a running group at a park. Get people together uh, sometimes for events and use those events as places through which people can study, people can donate, people can protest, people can do a wide variety of different things. Um, if you can host an event, which anybody really can deep down, um, uh, save for some exceptions. Think about trying to do that at some point. If you can create a good, healthy group of people that meet up regularly, think about how much you can do that. People need community. They need each other. They need each other's help. I want to talk about, speaking of bringing people together, unionizations, unionizations, unions and unionization, which is a very important tool that we have historically had in the age of capitalism to get workforces the kinds of accommodations needed to at least suffer less while being exploited. Of course, that has its strategic difficulties, as implied in my description of it, because you're still getting exploited in the workforce ultimately. But if you can organize your workforce to make demands of, of corporate to raise your pay or to offer benefits, that can be hugely important, not only for keeping people in a better place when they're working there, but also helping people have the paths to work elsewhere, to leave the job. And also we've discussed in our video on solidarity, how unionization is often a foundation for important changes to be made in legislation to protect the rights of people. Like in Canada, where unions helped work to secure rights for LGBTQ plus people. That also applies to tenant unions, landlords, who likes them, right? Who likes them? Uh, any landlords watching? If you're a landlord watching, consider giving your properties away because other people need places to live, you know? But if you are one of the many people that has to pay rent, think about getting in touch with local tenant unions for more um, ideas of how to organize and mobilize to secure more rights for yourself because the government ain't coming to fix the rent. They're not going to do rent control. They're not going to keep people in line that do this kind of illicit exploitative business. So we have to help each other do that. And my last point is to study. So th this is a channel where I try to encourage study. I also have a separate channel called Reading with Elliot, where I post live readings that I do, or sometimes not live readings that I do for free of different texts, books like uh, Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed, which is my favorite book, as well as sometimes articles, essays. Right now we're slowly getting through a Bell Hooks book um, because it's been hard to find time for me to do these live streams, but it will be finished. Uh, I want to create a type of place for people to access audiobooks, essentially, because we are having a difficulty with literacy in our generation. We are having difficulties with people not only reading, but reading in community, reading to understand. Hopefully, in my own journey towards reading to understand, I can help other people do that. Um, but regardless, studying. It's really important. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care. I know that to a degree, obviously, you can't just study. It's not praxis if you're just thinking. You have to do things. But it's going to be hard for you to know what things to do 
if you don't have an understanding of history that is grounded in reality and evidence, that is grounded in empathy, if you don't have an understanding of political philosophy, if you don't understand, you know, basic stuff about how economics works and things like that. So please study. There are so many places and things that I could recommend for you, but I have a sense that there's probably a few books that are already waiting for you on your shelf or in your folder if you've accessed them through websites which are a sort of genesis of a new type of library in which you can uh, access certain types of documents at a different cost than would normally be sold. So <laughs> get to reading those and get to reading them in community. Um, the more educated you are, at the very least, the more you can offer people in terms of your own insight and what you've gleaned. And it, it's, it's helpful, honestly, on a deep level, on a mobilizing level. Why wouldn't you want to know how the world works? It, it's very empowering to read. It's very empowering to study. And there are so many, so many brave and intelligent souls that have created all this information for us to gather. And there are initiatives constantly within schools with right-wing principles um, from right-wing governments trying to ban books, trying to stop people from developing critical thinking and critical literacy skills, from being able to access texts that are critical of governments, especially for the way that they capitalize off of people. So, you know, why not do that? That's basically my list right now. I understand if it's a bit disappointing, but hopefully at least one of those things might be inspiring for you to hear or it might put you onto something. Thank you all for listening to me though, and thank you all for your patience. Thank you for thinking about doing something to help other people rather than just sitting back and watching through social media as everything seems to get worse and worse. This is the kind of spirit we need. That's the kind of energy and thought we need. We don't need people to continuously stick themselves in cycles of blame and anger um, that is not being put in productive places. So you can also support me on Patreon if you so choose, where I put interviews with friends of mine, friends of the show, other channels like Zoe B and FD Signifier. And that would be very helpful to keep things going well over here, which would be the goal for me in terms of doing my job. So uh, before I say another convolutedly worded sentence, thank you. And I'm going to sign off now. Have a good one.